So this is pretty close. This is like pretty pretty swell. So how could we make how could we make this better? Well, one way that we might make it better is we might think about the fact that while this is really slick and awfully handy, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this goober. We don't need that. Well, this is a really handy way to approach this particular problem. Uh, you know, I might want something that's a little bit more generalized. Uh, if I'm thinking about how I want to run or operate something outside of just touch. And not only how I might operate something outside of just touch, but you know, maybe I don't want to actually just have to write this script every single time. Maybe I'd like to write something that's a little bit uh, easier to manage, something that's a little more extensible. Gives me a few other options. We can take some of the lessons we've learned from working with modules and extensions in touch and use that same idea here when we're working with Python, in kind of pure Python land. So let's go ahead and look at how we might build a Python module to do some of this work for us. So I'm going to create a new Python file called launcher, L-A-U-N, launcher.py, right? And then I'm going to create a new Python file that's my ADV Python start.py. Okay, so what do I want? What am I really up to? What I really want to do is here in my advanced Python approach, I want something like launcher startup, and then I want to just send along, let's say, my current directory, so where I am, my tow file, and then some launch uh, UN, some launch args. That's what I'd love to do. That'd be so handy. H how can we get here? Right? That's, that's where we're going. So let's take a look at what it would take to get there. So let's head over to Launcher and let's, let's just build like the simplest, easiest, uh, kind of low hanging fruit kind of thing we might jump at. So the first thing that we might think about is how do we get back a concatenated file or concatenated file name that points to our tow file? Okay, so let's write a little method called paths. And this that's exactly what this is going to do. It's going to take a current directory. So it's going to take a directory and it's going to take a tow file and it's going to return a start file, right? It's going to do that work for us. Why would we do this as its own method? Well, we can think about, you know, it's not uncommon that assembling path names or assembling those pieces becomes really futzy and fussy often. Uh, and so why not, right? Why don't we just take that, take this opportunity, to write a little generalized method to help us get there. Now, if we want to do this really efficiently, we take a slightly different approach, but we're going to explore a couple different concepts here. So we're going to use a slightly non-ideal way to do this. Uh, we could actually do a much better job, but for now, that's OK. OK, so what are we going to do here? I want my start file to be equal to, I'm going to use the OS module again, so OS path join and out of this I want to join my current directory and my tow file. I want to just stick those goobers together. Now again if we were thinking about this slightly differently you know we'd use a, a little bit of a different approach that's okay. We're looking at just our kind of getting our bearings here for how we work with kind of pure Python modules. Now the other thing we've got to make sure we do is we've got to import that OS module since we're using it down here. Okay, let's see if that actually worked. We're going to go back to our launcher here. Now, this time around, we've got to import launcher, right? The thing we just wrote. And then let's print our launcher paths. And we need to pass this a current directory and a tow file. Okay, what are those going to be? Well, sure enough. Let's go ahead and get to the business of doing that. So our current current 
vector and our tow file, right? So our current directory, how are we going to grab that? Well, we can actually grab that from this file itself. So we could use OS path, the directory name, dir name, and we're going to get that from the OS path, our abs path, and I want to use the file that we're actually uh, running to be able to figure out where I am. Now, you'd notice that we're using that OS module again, so we've got to import the OS module also here in this script. Now our tow file, which tow file are we using? We're using that auto start.tow. Okay, so let's see if what we get back works the way that we expect. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're using Python to run our ADV. <gasps> bada bing, bada boom. There's our pointer right back to our tow file. Okay, so this is our first little foray into the things that we actually need this to do. Okay, let's get rid of that for right now. And let's get back to how we're going to make this launcher startup business work. So let's go back to our launcher module. Now, we're going to define this thing, right? Startup. Now, we could go through the same practice we did before, right? Our current directory, our tow file, all of our arguments, or we could use quargs, our keyword arguments. This lets us pass in any arbitrary number of arguments to a function or method uh, with keywords that are associated with them. Keyword pairs, just like we would think about a dictionary, right? This has a pairing for us. And that can be really handy because it means that we can extend this later without having to add more variables into how we're defining how this function works. Now, if I look back here, we'll see that I've got this thing, directory tow file launch args. I'm going to grab those and bring them right on over here because I think I want to take advantage of the fact that I've already written those. Right? Let's get rid of those commas. Okay. So how on earth am I going to use this quargs business and get these things, right? So my keyword over here in script land, right, is current dir tow file launch files, launch args. And I'm going to use the same kind of technique that I would use with a dictionary in order to find the value that's paired with that key. So I can use quargs get current dir, great. Quargs get tow file, all right, and quarg get launch args. Okay. I also need to know that start file. And how am I going to get that? I'm going to call paths. And out of paths, I'm going to pass it that current directory and the tow file, right? So I went ahead and grabbed those. I'm going to pass those back over here to this other function, and then I'm going to get back this here start file. So far, so good. Slick, easy peasy. I like it. Okay. Now what? Well, what is this launch args business? Why? What am I up to here? What is this little mystery goober? Well, what I want to be able to do is I want to think that my launch args, yargs, launch yargs, right? I want to think of that as a list because I want an, an ordered mechanism for how I start things up. And I want to pass into this list that environment variable, right? Which variable? And then the val that's associated with that variable. So I'm going to actually use a dictionary for this. And right, we can do env var, the variable. In this case, right, startup. And my env, env val, in this case, the first one up is controller. Now, I want to take this whole block and I want to make another one of those. And this one is going to be node, right? So I want to pass over this list 
And then I want this start function. Spelled that wrong. That was definitely not going to work. I want this start function to actually do some of this work for us. Right? OK. Well, let's take a look at what that means. Well, let's do something simple first. So for each, let's say, each set in my launch args, what do I want to do? Well, let's go ahead. First, we need to get that env var, env var, env val. Right? We need both of those. That's going to be in our launch, in our each set get, because I've passed in a li list of dictionaries, env val, each set. I want to grab out of this my env, env, Ooh, this is my val, this is my var, right? Var, var, val, val. Slick. All right, so let's just do something simple like let's just print out my env bar, my env val, and my start file. Let's just first confirm we have all that working. This, you know, before we get too far down this rabbit hole, let's make sure that even the easiest things are working the way that we want. I'm going to go ahead and clear my terminal. I'm going to launch that. <gasps> Bum, ba, da, dum. Something went wrong. What happened? OK, let's take a look. So this is telling us that, sure enough, the startup currenter, oh, what happened? Well, what happened is that we didn't actually give these any keywords. So our currenter is our currenter. Our tow file is our tow file. Our launch args is our launch args. Right? We need a keyword. Right? This keyword's got to actually uh, match what we're expecting over here in quargs. But when we use this keyword arguments uh, descriptor, that means that we actually have to use keywords uh, when we pass in arguments. OK, let's clear this out. Let's try one more time. <gasps> OK, so we'd start up a controller with this tow file. We'd start up a node with this file so far. I love it. Amazing. That's brilliant. Um, so, you know, I could put all my instructions in here. That'd be one way to do this. But again, if I'm taking a, a clue or a cue from some of the other work that we've done, maybe what I really want to do is I want to launch event. And my launch event is actually going to be, um, let's see here, what can we call it? Let's just call it launch. And Right? I'm going to call this method called launch. And I'm going to pass in an env var, an env val, and a start file. Now, we're going to use the same trick that we did before with uh, keyword arguments env var. So, env val. Let's just go ahead and get all of that set up here. Let's come up here. Let's write a new function, launcher, or launch, excuse me. So this is our launch. We're going to use quargs again. OK. How do, what are we going to do? env var, env val, quargs get, you know this dance so far, env var. We could certainly write a class to do this instead. That'd be another way of thinking about this particular problem. This is probably like a little bit too much heavy lifting for what we really need to, to do here. But we could we could uh, you know run that direction if we really felt like it. Start file. Okay. What are we gonna do with this? So Back to what we looked at before, our environment variable, right? So our env variable is equal to our env value. Then we do os start file. OK, great. And then we're going to use our start file to fire this thing off. And actually, what I want to do with this is I want to return a message. I want to actually get something back from this that, so I know what happened. So my message, I'm going to actually 
do a little multi-lined business here. What's that going to be? I think what I want it to do is I want it to say that it's starting. And I'm going to put in a bunch of spaces here. Great. What am I doing? So the file that I've used for this, I want to know that. I want to know the environment variable that I used. And I want to know the value that was attached to that variable. Now, this time around, we're going to use a different format technique. We'll use var val. We'll use these keywords because it's good to practice lots of different ways to do this, right? So I'm going to format dot format. And what do I have to do? File is going to be our start file. Var is going to be our env var. Val is going to be our env val. OK, great. So, ooh, look at that. Val u. Excellent. So I've got this launch event. And after I do this, I just want to print that launch event. Right? Because what I get back is that message, and I want to print that thing out. OK. So here we go. This looks pretty pretty good so far. Not, not too bad. We're 35 lines. Easy peasy. Here we are in our advanced uh, script. Let's run that. Oh, it looks like we're starting up one that's a controller. We're starting up another one that's a node. We'll wait patiently here for the operating system to catch up with us. Right? And there's a lot, like, why would you want this? What's the, what's the benefit in thinking about this? Well, if you've got some kind of Python uh, process or script that's actually doing some housekeeping for you so that uh, you don't have to worry about managing or keeping tabs on your applications, that's one uh, kind of use case not uncommon in the installation space to be able to kind of offload some of that responsibility. Other things you might think about here is maybe you're doing a set and there is always a particular startup order to the applications that you run. You know that you need to fire up Ableton first and after Ableton launches you actually start up some max patch and after that max patch starts then you need to run touch and you figured out through trial and error that you need to wait exactly 10 seconds between those things you name it, there's any number of different considerations that you might be fighting with. And in thinking about how you automate, streamline, and make that process easier for yourself, you might think about what are ways you could pass in arguments, right? So something like this. So maybe you've got a little launcher script that's your start set. And maybe more than just environment variables and valuable uh, vals that go along with that. Maybe what you're passing in here would be the files that you're going to start, and then del the delay times between them. Because you know that after, you know, from some set of trial and error, you want it to start up in a particular order, in a particular way, and you need to get a certain set of arguments to each one of those applications as they fire up. This kind of approach helps you automate that process, so you don't have to think about it anymore. You can handle it all in a script, bada bing, bada boom, and you're off to the races. Something like this becomes even more important to consider and think about, especially once you get into the realm of thinking about long-term installations or pieces that live without your daily control or hands on them. How can you make it easy for someone uh, that's either you're working with or a client that's running an installation in a gallery or you name it, to be able to fire up your project without going through a whole bunch of hoops and pieces to make sure that it works the way it's supposed to? So there you go. We're going to look at some just little slice of this uh, in the workshop, but I want to make sure that there is an extra resource for us all to come back to and pull from uh, when you run into this problem, because if you do this kind of work for long enough, sure enough, you want some way to do some permutation of this exact thing. Anyway, happy programming, everyone. Can't wait to see you all in Montreal. And if you're watching this after Montreal, Hopefully the summit for 2019 was a blast and lots of fun and you are out in the world making art and exciting things. 
Happy programming, everybody.